Hello and welcome to Bob and Talk. In this video, we will go over together what the latest version of Clo3D is. I haven't updated my software yet, so we will do this together and we will see what the latest 7.0 version has to offer. We will see what the different features are, how they're implemented, and how I would look into finding out what these new features are and how we can use them. I have not updated to the latest software, so we're gonna do this together. And here it is. So we have a newly improved CLO 7.0.242. It has been released and all you have to do is click on the update button before we click on that we're going to take a look here at what the changes are or what the updates are so here they're first saying that there are a couple of fixed issues one of a oh, couple there's actually a whole list of crashes that have been fixed crash when loading crash when clicking on the pom tab crash when using nesting there's a whole lot of them we're gonna just click update and we're gonna watch this update real quick. So here it says about eight, nine, 10 minutes. It keeps changing depending on the speed of your Wi-Fi. In the meantime, while that's updating, you could always just go here and see what issues are fixed and see if any of the issues that you have experienced has been fixed. So we'll just take a look at this and we're gonna let it run through its course. Now this took a lot faster than I thought, about maybe a minute, minute and a half, and now it says that the program must be restarted. That is usually the case when you're updating software, so it will just restart and it will apply the new changes. You can see that we now have a brand new window. It tells you that this is CLO 7.0, and we can now see that in the top left area here, we have a blue C logo. And that tells me that we are in the newest software as this was black and white before. Before we go any further, I would like you to take a look here in the library area and see how we have some little blue ends. And anything that has a blue end next to it, that means that there are new assets and you should download those new assets. That will update to the latest avatar settings, hanger settings, fabric settings, hardware and trim, stage, all of that. So I would recommend that you come up here anytime you see those blue ends and just left click once and let it update and you'll see the little timer appear here and you will see the blue bar start rising and it will show you that this is what's getting updated and it's downloading all of these new features. Now this took almost as long as updating the software. So that tells me that there were a lot of features here. If we scroll through this new pop-up window, we will see what was downloaded. So for avatar and hanger, we have a kit pen clip hanger. We have some new assets for uh, particular avatars like Dario, Martin. We have an adult shirt hanger. We have some assets for Camilla. We have an adult shirt hanger, pant clip hanger, new updates for Grace, for Kelly. There is a kid jacket hanger. So you can see all of the new updates if you scroll through this. For hair and shoes, I really hope they have some new updates for hair and shoes because all of those have been pretty pathetic, let's say. So now we have an open toe pump. I can't wait to see that. New sneaker, it better be more interesting than what we had before. We have another sneaker here. We have a pixie cut. We have a couple of more sneakers here. I presume that that's the same sneaker, just for different avatars. I find the shoes in Clo3D to be really boring. We have new pose updates here. We have some fabric, cord, ribbon. We have a few of those in the hardware and trims here. We have some sew through buttons, snap rivets and snaps and eyelets. So we have quite a bit of the hardware updates here. We also have some, I guess, new fabrics. We have trim hardware, silk jersey. So there's quite a few of these too. That is great news. All of those were updates that we got here. And when you click OK, you can see that all of the ends disappeared. So one of the easiest and best ways to find out what the latest features are to just type up 
Clothe 3D, whatever the latest update is in your favorite search engine. And then just look for the official Clo website. So here up top, I see in Clo 3D support, we can see the articles for every single new feature list. And you can even go back to previous versions, for example, 6.2, and see what the key features were for that particular release, what other features specifically for 3D, 2D materials, and you can go through all of the different versions here. So right now we're on 7.0, so we will look at those. So let's start from up top. Key features are parametric pattern creation, Pantone library and native support for Apple Silicon. Other features, we have everything underneath. This looks like a really comprehensive list with a lot of features. So let's start up top, parametric pattern creation. I personally don't use parametric pattern creation. I actually have no idea what that is, but I just clicked on it because I am curious to see what that is. And here it tells you what's the objective to easily create parametric patterns by entering specs. That sounds amazing for any kind of technical designers. And next, the location here is main menu editor, parametric pattern editor. And you can see what the operation is. Select the tool, enter each value, click and place the patterns on the desired points. Next on this list is the Pantone library. So we're gonna left click on Pantone library to see what these features actually are. I like the idea of having a Pantone and you can see where this is located. It is an object browser, fabric tab, fabric item color. So let's take a look. I am gonna go to my object browser. Here is my fabric. I have some random fabric. I don't have an avatar right now. So they said to go to fabric item and color. So here is my fabric item in the object browser. And in the property editor, I will go down to color. Currently I have none. I'm gonna left click on the chip and I can see that I have a Pantone colors here and I have three different color palettes. And here they're telling me to do the following operation. Follow the indicated guideline below. A color window appears, refer to the table below to set the color. So that is exactly what I have here. I could choose any of these colors and these are my official Pantone references. You can see here that we have the copyright symbol for 2022. Usually here, and I find this very helpful under each explanation of what the objective location operation for each one is, we also sometimes, and in this case is very helpful, we have a chart here that tells us what exactly we could do with this particular operation. So within the custom palette, we can edit color, we can utilize an eyedropper, and the eyedropper is right here. Let's go to Clow. So eyedropper is right here on the left side. You could left click on the eyedropper and then select any color you like. Now just keep in mind that when you're done with the eyedropper, see here we have the little sign that says escape to exit the eyedropper. So you have to click escape on your keyboard to exit. I have personally struggled with that, trying to click OK or cancel, and the eyedropper just keeps selecting the colors that I'm clicking on. So you click on anything else, <laughs> including the OK button, and you will not be able to exit. It will just select the color. So please escape and then just click OK for your selected color. Before we do that, I want to just run through all of these. And you can see how each number here tells you exactly where that is within the color palette. So edit color would be right here. That simply means that you're moving your cursor and you can choose a color. Number two is eyedropper. That is the eyedropper that we selected here. Number three is add color. So add color, you're adding the selected color here. So right here, you let's say you could select this color and you will add that color into a new color lineup here. Four is swatch size, adjust the size of swatches. Number four is right here. So let's take a look at it. So right here, we can see by moving the slider left or right, we can make this color palette bigger or smaller, meaning that the color swatches actually get bigger or smaller. I love that. Number five is open save files, five right here. So that would be this little icon here. I'm gonna hover over it 
save as palette so if you click on that you will save this particular palette six reset your custom palette number six is here but number six would be right here if i left click on that it will reset and you'll be able to start adding new swatches for example here's my blue let's pick a pink one i'm gonna add that let's pick maybe something that's more teal color i'm gonna add that so this is how i'm building my new color palette this is how i could save it and this is how i could reset it and last choose list detail or icon view to change the view so number seven you can see it's here so that would be right here left click see it as a list and you can give it names if you double click so that was my let's say midnight blue and now you will have the color chip with the name next to it if you don't want to see it in the list anymore left click and you will see it with the names next to each other number eight edit color swatch rename reorder we actually just did that we renamed it reorder and delete so number eight is here so coming in here we can actually click on a swatch change the color i'm gonna click on the teal one i'm happy with this one i am leaving it and i could also let's see if i can right click and left click and just delete that didn't do anything right click and delete no nope. So they're saying you can delete it, pressing, click the swatch and delete it, pressing the delete key in the keyboard. So it helps to actually read these directions. That was not what I thought. So I'm gonna select the blue one. I'm gonna click delete on my keyboard and nothing happened. So I guess that doesn't quite work. Let's read the directions again. Edit color swatch, delete click the swatch and delete it pressing delete in the keyboard again i'm gonna press the teal dreams well that's actually the hot pink and click delete well that did not let's click on the name click delete that doesn't work let's click on icon view so we'll do this again by left click on the teal delete so that feature for some reason doesn't work Leave me a comment if you have found a workaround, if it works for you, it doesn't work for you. To me, it looks like this particular feature doesn't work. So I'm gonna click okay, and we're gonna move on. Next on our features, export rule file. So if I left click on that, here is what that means. So DXF is a standard file format of industrial CAD patterns and stores 2D patterns information. DXF is currently available in Yuka Gerber Electra. Here are all the systems that it's using. And files are compatible with most 2D CAD software. So DXF is a wider use file extension for all of these systems. And we can see all of the systems here. Okay. And we also have a bit more details here on how we can utilize this. And you can go through this chart to see what these mean and how they could be used. Let's take a look on the next feature. So for 3D window, we have move avatar and garment, schematic render, a love schematic render, 3D background and maintain image ratio. So let's take a look at move avatar and garment. I have an avatar here open they're saying that we can select and modify or move the overall avatar and garment so move avatar and garment in version 7.0 so how do we utilize this feature we right click on the avatar and we get this pop-up menu we're gonna right click on the avatar in the 3d window and yes we do get a pop-up menu that we haven't seen before select all faces select avatar and garment delete avatar delete all avatars delete seam props move avatar to center to ground what if i just want to move it a little bit let's take a look if we can do that with select avatar and garment select avatar and yes let me just go to fully 3d window we now have the gizmo tool and i'm going to zoom out a little bit and with the gizmo tool, I'm going to left click on the cube in the middle and you can see that we can now move everything together. That is extremely helpful 
is you can just go up down around with everything on the avatar i find this to be a huge upgrade and a great feature let's take a look at the next updated new feature in the 3d window that would be schematic render button outline and holes so let's left click on that and location is in the same in the render schematic render or in the 3d window so let's take a look at that so the schematic render is still located here as a separate tool in the window left click to open the pop-up window and i don't see any new lines here we still have silhouette line that you can see or not see i can see the seam line internal line top stitch line and you can make these thicker or thinner i've made the silhouette line five pixels the seam line let's make that three pixels so we can see it a little bit better internal line is two pixels i don't have any internal lines you can see here in top stitch line right now is at 250 percent but i don't have any top stitching so you can't really see that the only thing that i see maybe different here is the brightness that we can make the brightness itself lighter or brighter and the line color is still here and we can change the color to any color you would like so i'm gonna go for teal blue color and here you can also just as in the previous version make these visible or invisible and choose and select which lines you would like to see so that seems to be the only change here let's take a look brightness again is the only thing that i see different so let's go to the next features this see how this pop-up window stays on top of other windows so i'm gonna left click and close that and obviously when that window is closed schematic render is closed and we don't see any of those lines next feature for the 3d window is 3d background maintain image ratio we didn't take a look at the button outline and holes feel free to leave a comment and let me know if you discovered how to actually access that particular feature maybe if i had a button or button holes on that garment maybe we would see that so let's go to 3d background maintain image ratio and this is a background texture color and transparency of the 3d window that to me sounds very helpful and that's under main menu display format 3d background or right click pop-up menu for 3d window so let's go in our clothes and right click and i see the new line here format 3d background left click on that and i love this so you could go and bring a picture or texture fill or a solid fill i don't have a picture prepared so i'm just going to left click on solid fill and you can see that we have this now dark gray and i have a swatch here i'm going to click on that swatch and choose different color you can also use the picker remember you click escape to get out of it and i'm going to click ok with my chosen color wow and i can see that this really did fill the whole screen with my chosen color i am very happy with that and i presume that if i have a picture to fill in that would also be a very easy just choose picture or texture fill and then bring the picture that you would like i have this picture from recent travels of mine so i'm going to select that picture and we can see that that picture definitely got uh, placed in the full screen behind me the only thing is i don't see how i could actually change the scale of that picture but she is now on the beach and enjoying herself very very much i could reset that or i can click ok or cancel so i'm gonna reset that let's go for an orange background and make that super blindingly bright for you click ok and this is what we have now now for the 2d window we have a couple of different new updates here one of them is grading improvements entering moving distance in point smart guide i am not a technical designer but if you're interested in those, you can again left click and take a look at the features that you have. And I like that Clo3D has actually created a video here. You can either read where these features are, how to activate these tools, what the operations are. And you could also watch a short video here that shows you exactly what that feature does. And you can see here where the tool is you can see how you can edit the grading and what exactly these features would do so this is it for the first part of reviewing 7.0 new features 
tune in for part two where we will review materials, colorway modes, biome mode, UV editor, and look at all of these new features here for interface. If you enjoyed my super bright colors and patterns, and if you didn't get blinded, please subscribe and follow up for the next videos. And always feel free to leave any comments or ask me any questions.